Welcome to the voice of St. Anthony Parish from Alston, Massachusetts, right here on WROL, 9.50 a.m., 100.3 FM. And you can also hear us at catholicaudiomedia.com, at catholicaudiomedia.com. We're here every single Monday through Friday at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And also you can hear us in your favorite podcast platform. Uh, we're at Catholic Audio Media, or you can search on your podcast platform, put in the words Catholic Audio Media, all one word, unless you're on Spotify, then use three words. Words, and uh, scroll through until you see the voice of St. Anthony Parish. Well, we're continuing our interview with Kelsey Gillespie, who is talking to us about her book, Real Life with Mary, Growing in Virtue to Magnify the Lord. And she's talking about how she brought her meditation on the life of Mary in light of the way she was bringing up her five and soon to be six children. I tell a story usually from my own life and connect it with what it would have been like back then with Mary, you know, what we see in the scriptures. Um, And then there are some questions to ponder at the end of each chapter. But I think it's really important to bring to light the fact that the Word is living and it's still relevant and applicable to today. And so even the things that we go through on, uh, on the daily um, they, they're, they're all connected. You know, we are still telling mm-hmm. the story that Jesus, that God was trying to tell, you know, through Abraham and David and Moses and <clears throat> Mary and Jesus and all, everybody, right? Like mm-hmm. we are the continuation of, of scripture itself, um, in that way. And so I think it's really cool to, to look at our lives even even mundane mm. stories as, well, what does this reveal to us about God? You know, like, what does this say about who He is and, and who I am because I am His? Mm-hmm. So. Well, that's, that's, that's powerful the way you express that. And one of the things, I, I can sure tell you're a writer <laughs> um, because you bring all that you know, it's it's not just well. This is who Mary was. Dot dot. That you really bring that whole, as writers do, that whole reflection of how things were, and also relate it with yourself. Uh, some of the things that you put together, well, the things you put together, and you know, I, I don't know how I missed this <laughs> until I looked at it and said, oh, oh yeah, it's like, it, it, it's it's like the obvious. You you set all the chapters up in relation to virtues. Yes. And we set all the chapters up chronologically through Scripture. Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I literally just, we went verse by verse, anything where Mary is mentioned, and I pulled Mm -hmm. out. Truly, I spent some time pondering and praying over all these verses and uh, pulled out the the virtues that Mary displayed in each of those situations, even if it's just something like really quick, um, <clears throat> you know, because um, a lot of times, I mean, that's that's kind of how scripture is written sometimes. Like nowadays, mm-hmm. we'll have like I don't know a lot of I don't know dialogue and action and stuff like in the in the books that we read. But back then, there there wasn't a whole lot of um, a whole lot of that, especially if you take a look at Mark. Like Mark is very straight Mm -hmm. to the point and you know he's going to just tell you what you need to know and that's that um but when you really start to look at um and and dive into and flesh out each of the verses uh you'll see the richness of virtue that mary displayed constantly throughout her life and throughout the scriptures Uh, um and in light of that, as you bring all of that together, I mean, there, there is uh, so much to relate to, in, you know, to stop and to think things through. There, one of the things I like to bring up, because obviously as a priest, I get a lot of. Well, first of all, maybe I should explain. I work with uh, different communities. I, sp- I sp- speak several languages, so I've worked for years with either the Hispanics or, as I do now, the Brazilians. And the women play a very powerful role uh, in many of the the Latino communities. Mm. Um, 
and you see that, and it's something I'm always teaching to the the North American, the uh, you know here in the United States, uh, the communities uh, about how they play this very important role. Um, it is it just just as kind of a, a little humor. I, I don't know if it'll come out humorous, but <laughs> a little humor I tell is, is if you walk in to a parish. Um, with a Hispanic element or a Brazilian element, and you say, I am the man here, you will do what I say, you last this about six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be, because it doesn't work that right. way. Right. And, and so one of the things that I always bring up is that uh, I, I say, do you actually think that when the uh, apostles were seeking how to bring the message of the gospel do you actually think that someone said, oh, we don't listen to Mary because she's a woman? Mm. And I said, obviously not, because she would have had so much wisdom and knowledge from her whole experience that they would have drawn on that every day. Right. And I think, I mean, somewhat similarly, like the ancient Jewish um, culture, it was very patriarchal in the sense that the men had the authority, right? Um, and mm-hmm. But I do think the matriarch was incredibly important to that in society as well. The matriarch was mm-hmm. beloved, you know, like, and um, and I think it, it was something that I learned from writing this book, actually, is that um, the facts that we have, stories like uh, the Jesus' birth, or his presentation mm-hmm. at the temple, or even the finding of Jesus in the temple when he's like 12. <clears throat> like, mm-hmm. by the time that the apostles were around, Joseph had died. Jesus mm-hmm. wasn't really a credible source to tell. I mean, he's God and all, all-knowing, and he's wonderful, and he's amazing. But he was also a baby mm-hmm. in most of those stories. Um, right. And so the only person who would be left to tell those stories to the apostles, Mary. And so the fact that we even have them shows that the apostles listened to her and probably thirsted for the, for for backstory and for information and um, all of these anecdotes about this, this guy that they have discovered to be the Messiah, right? Like, I know for me, mm-hmm. for me, like I thirst for for more. I always want to know more about who Jesus is, and and who who better to go to than his own mother, you know. And so I can mm-hmm. only imagine that they loved talking to her and loved hearing about what he was like growing up and and all of those sorts of things. And that's how we get some of this scripture, right? Like Mary bore the word, like in her womb, she like bore the word and then mm-hmm. she spoke the word. Um, and she, by giving us those stories, she gave us parts of mm-hmm. scripture. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, absolutely. And, and I, you know, I was going to, uh, to get to that section of finding uh, Jesus in the temple. Cause you lost, you, you know, you went through a period you tell, mm-hmm where I was in a store or someplace that you couldn't find your yes, child. And it is the worst feeling in the world. And I, so we were at a Dave and Buster's mm-hmm. and so it was very, very loud. Oh, wow. And yeah. there was, you know, ding, 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 all over oh, the place wow. and light flashing. And yeah. We couldn't find my, <clears throat> my, my little toddler at the time. I didn't know where she went. I didn't know if she had, you know, left, walked out the front door looking for us because she couldn't find us. And it mm. was a terrifying, horrible experience. Wow. Um, and it only lasted for a couple of minutes and then we found her. So I can't even imagine what it would be like for Mary to go three days, like a couple minutes for me when I couldn't find my daughter felt like an eternity. Mm. Um, and yet Mary went three days um, trying to find her son and, and pursuing uh, her son at all costs, right? Like when she meets him in the temple and he says, like, why have you been searching for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, rarely does Jesus ever ask a question so that he can learn the answer, right? It's always he asks a question mm-hmm. so that you can learn the answer. And 
the, right. he said, why have you been searching for me? And, and for Mary, it was because she would do anything. She would persevere through anything to be with him. And I feel like he, he, should, he poses that question to us through scriptures as well that way. Like, why do we search for him? Well, it's because we love him and hopefully would persevere through anything uh, to be with him. You know, and, and and I always take that to mean, and not only that, but, you know, I am who the Lord told you who I am. Well, how would I get lost? Yeah, right. And, oh, my gosh, in scriptures, mm-hmm. it says that Jesus chose to stay behind, right? Like, if I think about mm-hmm. taking my kids on vacation, especially when they're like 12 or whatever, they they know the yeah. plan. You know, we tell them ahead Mm. of time this is the plan i need you to pack these are the things that you need to do this is the time we're leaving like they know everything that's going to happen and and in scripture Mm. it says jesus chose jesus stayed behind as in like a conscious choice and i mean if it was me if that was my kid you would have to quote me in like all caps Mm. and symbols you know like but mary's Mary's oh, yeah. <laughs> first response is just like, let me give him. I'm going to give him a chance to explain himself. You know, her first response is, "Why? Yeah. Why yeah. did you do this? Help me understand who you are more." And I feel like, gosh, just like always, she set such a good example to us, um, and and what we're called to do. Like in any situation, like how? What can I learn about you in this moment, Jesus? And they let help me help mm. me know you better through this. And because of her patient understanding in that situation, like they got to travel back home as a united front, you know, as a united force. But there's been many times when I have mm. not been very patient or understanding with my children when mm-hmm. they have chosen to do something I didn't particularly like. And sure. and, and that causes division and separation and is in need of a reparation then. So uh, because of her patient mm-hmm. understanding, one, she got to learn more about Jesus. Um, and then two, she got to stay, she, she was together with him. You know, uh, she got to be with him mm-hmm. on the journey back home. So we're going to talk more with Kelsey Gillespie tomorrow as she continues her reflection on the life of Mary in light of her own life. Um, She is the author, as you know, of Real Life with Mary, Growing in Virtue to Magnify the Lord. It comes to us from Pauline Books and Media, and you can find this at paulinestore.com or your favorite Catholic bookstore and also online bookstores as well. So definitely check that out, Real Life with Mary, and we'll be back with Kelsey tomorrow. Have a blessed day.